The patch notes this time around for 3.24 are an absolute mixed bag. There are some absolutely crazy impactful changes that are going to have massive positive effects on the end game and just the game in general, as well as some pretty massive nerfs to certain skills, as well as a couple things that got nerfed that are kind of just head scratchers. I'm gonna do my best to talk about all of this and more in this video as quickly as I can and just give you the basic main information that you need. The next league is looking to be pretty monstrous, having tons of ways to craft items, as well as the return of tattoos, as well as a bunch of new transfigured gems. And although I am a little bit sad that Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation got pretty much obliterated, as well as all of the other league starters that I had planned, but I'm gonna do some work on a wand base if people are interested in that we'll have to see where that goes now if you're new to the channel make sure that you subscribe and without further ado let's get into it content update 3.24 we're not going to go super in depth into a lot of the league stuff if there is some interesting stuff to talk about from that i'll make a separate video for that we're going to be talking about the changes in here that i think that you need to know about so a new intelligence support gym sacred wisps this is what they have added in to make up for the fact that they absolutely dumpstered kinetic bolt of fragmentation once we see the numbers on this we see the information on this I'll be able to give you probably a little bit more information on whether or not I think that Wanders are going to be okay on League Start, at least as something that you can transition from a bow build into. But we really need to see the numbers on this, and we also need to see the information on this new Transfigured Kinetic Blast. I'm super curious to see these two things, but in the meantime, just assume that the Wander build might be pretty much completely dead. We are also getting automation as well as call to arms. You might've seen this in like a quality of life teaser that happened a little bit ago. We got some of the information on the level 2020 gems here, but it is confirmed left click is gone. You're not gonna be able to use left click with uh, like instant abilities anymore. While this does overall seem like mostly a nerf, there is some interesting tech that you can potentially do with call to arms that'll make it so that maybe you can have like a permanent uptime on an enduring cry buff as well as some other things. So there's some cool stuff here we need to see numbers though as for transfigured gems we're getting artillery ballista elemental hit ice shot incinerate kinetic blast poison concoction summon holy relic and tornado one absolutely massive and critical change is going to be the change to veiled chaos orbs these no longer exist veiled chaos orbs are being changed into veiled orbs they're no longer going to do their previous effect they are now going to give the effect that ashling had however they only drop from Katarina, and judging by the wording here where it says they can drop, it doesn't seem like it's a 100% chance for them to drop. Expect for these to probably be pretty expensive, unfortunately. I can imagine that they're gonna be three to four divine each. This is an absolutely insane nerf to early and mid-tier crafting. Uh, we have to hope that the new crafting stuff that we get from the league mechanic is able to kind of fill in the gaps here, which it looks like it can, but this is pretty rough. If I'm going to be honest with you, this is one of the, this is one of the more worrisome changes of the entirety of the patch notes. If you never did any kind of meta crafting previously, completely ignore this change is not going to affect you at all. However, even if you did just buy some meta crafted gear that will affect you. So eh. Expect to expect this to be a bit of a change. All of the bigger orbs now stack up to 20. This is really good for doing very large trades. For the average player, this probably won't matter very much to you. Most people don't even get 20 divine orbs by the time that they're done with the game, so it is what it is. We'll talk a bit about the changes that they've done to uber bossing, which this is exactly what I've been saying for them to do for, I don't know, like a year or two now. I made a video a while back talking about how there needs to be a separation between normal bosses and uber bosses, and they have done exactly that, and I'm so happy to see it. We'll talk more in depth in a little bit. A lot of you might actually care about this one in that there is going to be a bunch of new stuff throughout the campaign. This, for the most part, should mostly be optional, I think, but they're gonna be putting in a whole bunch of extra, just like goodies and league mechanics and stuff scattered throughout the campaign that should be kind of interesting, maybe give you access to some early good gear, those kinds of things, which should be pretty cool. I think most of it, like I said, is optional. All right, so let's talk about this bossing change. There is a lot to go over here. I'm gonna do my best. The TLDW, TLDR of it is that Uber bosses and normal pinnacle bosses now have their loot split. The more basic items drop from the basic version and the more powerful items drop from the uber version. You are now going to be able to get the fragments to be able to fight these uber versions of the bosses from new tier 17 maps. 
these are kind of meant to be an in-between space between normal pinnacle bosses and uber pinnacle bosses there are as far as i know five new tier 17 maps that you're going to be able to go into all with particular bosses with particular mechanics they're going to be very difficult probably not as difficult as some ubers but they will still be the way that you get these fragments. Now, another big thing here is that tier 17 maps have 20% quality and are unmodifiable. That means that when you drop this, it just drops as is and you gotta do it with the mods that are on there or you sell it to somebody else. They've also changed a bunch of the uniques that are going to be dropping from these new, uh, like semi uber bosses, I guess you could call them the tier 17 map bosses. And some of these are pretty insane. Like the dark seer is actually pretty crazy. It's going to give you like blinded enemies have malediction and plus two to level of all spell gems. The wraith lord unique helmet now is going to give you plus two to level of all minion skill gems, as well as plus one the maximum number of specters per socketed ghastly eye jewel so now you're just going to have four additional specters which is pretty crazy on top of that uh yoke of suffering now is essentially double as effective which is pretty crazy now they said they've made a few tweaks to the uber pinnacle boss fights i don't know what this means this is kind of terrifying if i'm going to be honest with you I don't know if they're going to make it so that some of them are more difficult or if some of them are easier or both. We'll have to see. Something that I think people should be relatively happy about is the fact that sextants as well as master missions are just simply gone. Now, don't think too negatively about this yet because most of the options that you had previously are now being baked into the new Scarab system. There are a ton more Scarabs now that do all kinds of really super impactful things. And that's pretty much all you need to worry about now. You don't need to worry about like layering a bunch of sextants and doing all kinds of annoying stuff. You just, you put the scarabs in there. It does all the cool stuff that you want and that's it. We don't know how this is going to affect like loot as a whole and some of the higher end juicing options. But for the average player, this is a massive reduction in complexity of just like putting some stuff into the map device and running your map. And it should be a lot more simple and most likely a lot more fun. Another big thing is that Maven invitations no longer drop. These are just going to be offered to you as soon as they are available, which for some people will be pretty good, but it's going to be in like a map device thing that you have to roll it on, which I kind of never liked when they did before. It's kind of clunky, but it's still better than what we had previously, I think. But for the most part, this should be a good thing. Now, there is absolutely no way that I can get into these like Atlas changes. I mean, look at this. Like, look at how much is here. There, there's no way that I can even begin to say anything about this until we get like the full Atlas passive tree and we can go over some of the stuff that's happened. However, as far as I know, Wandering Path, I think is gone, which means that like the early league strategy that people typically did over the last couple of leagues where you just get like guaranteed chance for connected maps to drop and all of that, I think that's just completely gone. That just doesn't work anymore. So we're kind of back to an RNG state where you just have to slowly work your way up and get the pinnacle bosses done. This means that consistent map times up to two pinnacle bosses being down are probably going to go up quite a bit, which doesn't really matter for most of you, I'm sure. It's kind of unfortunate for people who like to do two stone runs. It's kind of like a test. This should have a lot of new stuff that we can get into when it comes to Atlas passive tree changes and such, and also something that'll be talked about in a little bit, you're now going to have up to three Atlas passive trees that you can swap between whenever you want. So I'm just gonna skip most of this because realistically, I'm not gonna be able, able to tell you anything useful off of just reading this giant wall of text. This is one of those wait until the full tree is available and just see what we can do. They have had to rebalance a decent amount of stuff here about like where scarabs and different things drop, where things like omens and such are going to drop and all that kind of good stuff. This is pretty basic stuff. If you're interested in very specific drops, you might want to take a look at this. There are some Atlas changes. Um, interestingly, Cortex no longer drops from just any map boss anymore. It's only going to be dropping from synthesized map bosses, which means that you're now going to have to get the synthesized map drops, fight those synthesized map bosses, and then hope that they drop Cortex. This could result in a overall lowering of the amount of Cortexes that are in the economy, depending on how many people are actually farming those synthesized maps. But we don't know drop rates, we don't know anything like that yet, but this is a potential thing that could happen. So if you were one of the like five people who liked farming Cortex or something very early on in the league, probably be a little bit careful here because we really don't know how this is gonna work. Overall, the map shuffle seems to be not too terrible. We are losing things like City Square, so like 
really fast map boss rushing is not going to be as easy. We are also losing Mesa, which is a really popular map for early farming, but we still have Dunes, which is pretty good. And we're getting some interesting stuff back, like we're getting Defiled Cathedral back, which is pretty decent. A couple other good things, but this is just kind of a wash. I don't really think this is good or bad. Some of the Kyrak mods are a little bit more expensive, um, like Particular Essence was two Chaos this league, and now it's three Chaos, as well as some like rebalancing of these down here. So it is what it is, but there's definitely some like changes that have happened through here. If you have a particular like style of content that you like doing early in the league, make sure that you check to make sure that those costs aren't too high. As far as I can tell when reading this Soul Eater buff being reworked, Soul Eater is where you get one of those monsters that just starts sucking in those little red beams from all the enemies around it when you kill it and it turns into this giant Godzilla behemoth that you're not able to contend with. These now have a maximum amount of souls that they can suck in, so this should be an overall nerf to that effect when it comes to those monsters. However, this is also a nerf for Headhunter, which isn't a huge deal, but it was always nice when you got the Soul Eater buff and you just went absolutely like berserk crazy with the, you know, Headhunter and such like that. But I will trade Headhunter being worse for Soul Eater not being such a such a menace in maps. And then we have this change with Unholy Might. This is kind of massive and not what I was expecting out of this. Unholy Might used to give you 30% of physical damage as extra chaos damage. Now it gives you 100% of physical damage converted to chaos damage and 25% chance to apply wither on hit. That's insane. Just Even just the 25% chance to apply wither on hit is nuts. The new Unholy Might is very powerful. You shouldn't look over this. There's probably going to be a decent amount of stuff that comes from this, even just for the chance to apply Wither on hit. Pretty massive. Now, let's get to these skill gem changes. Um, there's a lot here, if I'm going to be honest with you. There's going to be a decent amount of jumping around in between these because some of them seem pretty impactful, but a lot of these, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Like, it, it doesn't seem like it's doing very much, but, you know, we'll see. But going down the list, Absolution of Inspiring. This is interesting because I think this might legitimately be a skill this league. I don't know that it's going to be top tier, but Maffle played a version of this build this league that was pretty decent. And with it getting 250% value out of minion damage now instead of 200, it might push it over into being a pretty worthwhile build. Maybe not a meta build, but maybe like a, just like a B tier build or something like that. We'll have to see. Enemy Weapon of Self-Reflecting. I think I saw Captain Lance do something with this recently in a League Start test. So this is getting buffed to six animated weapons, which is pretty cool. This is a massive change. Uh, it can no longer support brand or orb skills. Uh, rest in peace, subtract them. Sorry, gamer. It no longer has supported skills gain added lightning damage equal to 75% of mana cost if mana cost is not higher or have a base mana cost equal to 5% of unreserved mana. It now has supported skill gems gain added lightning damage equal to 10% of your unreserved maximum mana, scaling up to 19% at level 20. And it also gives them supported skills have added mana cost equal to 5% of unreserved mana. So what this means is that Archmage is no longer really about scaling mana cost. It's about scaling your overall mana. At a glance, I don't know whether this is like a numerical buff to a lot of stuff. So they've already gone and just gotten rid of the problem skills that could have issues here, which is like orb skills and brand skills, of course. Those are historically ones that have had problems. But one problem that Archmage builds in general have always had is that when you're spending all of your mana to be able to cast your ability, while mana is also your defensive layer, it can leave you just suddenly very, very weak defensively. So this is a good change in that it makes it so that Archmage can be more tanky overall. Whether or not it's gonna be worth it damage-wise, I'm not so sure. We'll see. Um, these numbers look okay. We'll see. Hopefully there's some good stuff to be had here, but uh, you know, can't know at this point. While we're on the topic of orb skills, uh, Ball Lightning of Static can't be used by totems either anymore. So uh, yeah, Ball Lightning of Static, probably just not good anymore. <laughs> Fortunately, it is what it is. Now, we all know that this had to happen. Cleave of Rage needed to be nerfed. Very obviously, Cleave was too strong of an ability, and they just had to nerf something about it. Now, there's been a decent amount of hype behind Explosive Trap of Shrapnel. I have no idea what the results of this particular change are realistically going to be. At a glance from what I can see, this looks like the overall clear of the skill has been nerfed pretty heavily. 
in the sense that you're not going to be able to get as like screen wide AOE as you might have seen in some recent people's testing. I did a bunch of testing on this myself as well. So when it says secondary radius here, this is the radius in which the traps can be thrown out to the radius in which the explosions can happen. So it's like the overall area of it. This has been nerfed from 3.6 down to three, which is pretty big. However, the explosions themselves that happen within this secondary radius have also had their AOE nerfed pretty heavily from 1.9 down to 1.3. So overall, it should be a similar looking explosion in a smaller area. I don't know the implications of this, but probably be wary of a little bit. Maybe wait until Dumbo says something. Maybe he'll be able to figure it out. Now, I was pretty excited about Firestorm of Pelting here going up to 10 because tattoos are back. And I was pretty happy about tattoos being back because the Blood Magic Firestorm build that I had ran a league or two ago needs tattoos to function properly. But we'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about tattoos. For all the people who are interested in playing that Frost Blink like zoom across the map build, uh, yeah, so that's been completely destroyed as far as I can tell, because the cast time is added to its cooldown if triggered, meaning that you're no longer going to be able to get that, like, zoom straight across the map effect that you saw previously. And it's also been nerfed pretty heavily when it comes to damage. Now, this one's interesting in that General's Cry used to be a pretty heavily, like, left-clicked ability. And I was thinking of playing a General's Cry build in the upcoming League, and it has been buffed by 25% overall damage. Three second cooldown versus four is pretty huge. However, without being able to kind of like automate this on left click, I'm not so sure that it's going to be as useful, but I'll probably still mess with it sometime in the near future. Now let's talk about the big one. Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. No longer has increases and reductions to spell damage also applied to attack damage from this skill at 200% of their value. So this is a pretty big nerf, but you can still get 100% relatively easily. So not that big of a deal, right? It also lost the extra 50% from quality. It also now has only 70% effectiveness down from 85. This in and of itself, I don't think would have killed Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, but let's talk about a change that's going to be happening a little bit further down that we'll have to talk about that I do think kills it. So Lancing Seal of Spraying, you might have noticed that this was being used a decent amount in like cast on crit setups. It did get nerfed a little bit. Um, as for how much of a nerf this is, I'm not super familiar with the build. I think Rue was doing something with it. Probably go with him and see what he says about this being reduced to eight. Don't know how good or bad it's going to be. And in Spray of Dissipation, this is a pretty big nerf, but it was already an outlandishly strong skill. Um, as for how much of a nerf this is, I've heard anywhere from 30% to 50%, maybe even a little bit more than that. I mean, the ability was so insanely powerful before that it might still be okay, but I personally don't know. This is a massive nerf though. There were some people playing the Scourger of Menace build, got a relatively sizable nerf, about a 20% overall nerf. It's only four thorn arrows instead of five now. And then we get to the Sniper's Mark nerf. So this is, this is big, okay? For any build that abused Sniper's Mark previously, I've been saying for a little while that this is coming. Sniper's Mark has been gutted. Um, it's still okay, and it's probably still good for projectile builds, but when I say that this thing has been gutted, it's been gutted. Because previously, the way that Sniper's Mark worked is that at level 21 of the gym, it would give you five splits. So if you got 100% mark effect, this means that you would get 10 splits. Now it's capped to two additional targets at all gym levels. So it's been nerfed by 60% uh, overall, which is pretty huge and it lost damage on top of that. So builds that were doing things like Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation that was doing like the big giant AOE where it would go in and out like that. Those are pretty heavily nerfed here. Things like Splitting Steel Abuse, that's pretty heavily nerfed here. With this, as well as the Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation nerf here, that particular setup, in my opinion, is completely dead. I don't think that it will really be worth playing at this point. What I'm more interested in seeing now is how the new support gem works as well as the new kinetic blast. Because realistically, I've done some basic testing and with the setup that I was using last league, I think you'll still be able to just use kinetic blast for quite a bit. You're just not going to be able to one shot ubers anymore. That was probably too much for a build that should have just been a clear build in the first place. However, that big punchy single target damage 
I don't exactly know that it's there. I'm going to be working on a wand build still, so look forward to that. We'll see if I can get something together. Like I said, I got to see the new kinetic blast. I got to see the new support gym, see the numbers on it, see how good it is, because it could still potentially be pretty good. There were a decent amount of people playing Stormbrand and Indecision. This did get a relatively sizable nerf. I don't know how big of a nerf this is, but it seems relatively large. Also, Summoned Raging Spirits got a massive nerf. It lost 38% more damage. This is huge. This is a this is a big change. 38% more damage is a lot. So the scaling that you got on Summoned Raging Spirits is just gone now. And as you'll see with a Guardian change is happening later, I, I don't know that this is, I don't know that this is a League starter that you choose anymore if I'm gonna be real with you. And we have the long awaited change that we've basically been waiting for, for I don't know how long at this point, but I, I think now potentially Tornado Shot is, uh, is finally dead. So they've had the attack speed multiplier reduced to 80%. This is, this is a massive change. This is just like, you lose 20% of your damage. And they have also made it so that the quality now no longer gives you fires one secondary projectile, like plus one secondary projectile. And as far as I'm aware, there is no source of this in the game anymore. So that means that there's no way to scale secondary projectiles on Tornado Shot anymore, which is a really, really big nerf. I think Tornado Shot might be dead. Um, I'd probably go listen to like Tuna or Fubgun or something like that about Tornado Shot most likely. My, in my like kind of okay opinion here, I'm pretty sure that this skill is, is pretty dead. And then last but not least, Volatile Dead, you can't like go massively over on your orbs anymore. It will simply just destroy them if you make way too many. So it's a pretty big nerf. And then, as I said before, Summon Sentinel of Radiance has been nerfed from dealing 30% of its overall life as damage to 20% and the AOE of it has been nerfed pretty heavily. This is still gonna be good, but it's not just going to like insta carry you all the way through the campaign and through maps anymore. It's just gonna be like kind of a good thing. You'll have to actually scale mini life quite a bit for this to be as good as it was before. Notably, uh, the Necromancer is getting some pretty massive changes to how some of their gems work because of like bone armor, bone barrier, whatever it is, not being able to be used on left click anymore and not being able to automate it. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not really much of a minion player, but 1% of damage dealt by your minions is leached to you as life. Seems pretty good to me, if I had to be honest. The Call to Arms keystone has been changed to Warlord's Call now. It makes it so that war cries no longer exert attacks, but those war cries grant their buffs to your nearby allies. Minions and totems are allies. So this is pretty interesting. This might buff some pretty cool stuff, like with maybe like Battle Mage's Cry and stuff like that. We'll have to see. Maybe a new cool build pops up from this. Um, I'm curious to see what happens. They've changed the energy shield mastery to be 50% of your energy shield is added to your sun threshold instead of it being base 60% on your life. This is a nerf to Blood Notch is the whole idea of this. The like combo that you could get where you could just always be stunned and not have to worry about it and heal all of your health back. This ease of access to this has essentially just been taken out of the game now. They have added in a new passive for Mind Master where it says Detonate Mines is triggered while you are moving, meaning that if you are moving, you're now going to be triggering your minds. So people who liked that playstyle previously can still have it. Probably the weirdest change on this entire list, if I'm going to be honest with you, is that they didn't decide to make Ralakesh tier zero. They didn't decide to nerf it in any meaningful way, like, you know, changing how many of the charges are giving you minus charges or like removing chaos resist or something like that. They just took all the movement speed off of it. It just has no movement speed now, which I get it, but it makes me kind of sad because that's like the one modifier on there that I wish would have stayed. You could have taken all of the resistance off of it and I wouldn't have cared. You could have made it tier zero and I wouldn't have cared, but the movement speed, kind of sad if I'm going to be honest with you. A pretty sizable change is the fact that stack decks are now significantly less powerful. You can't get boss exclusive items from them anymore. And as far as I know, they've nerfed the drop rate of them by about half. And I don't think they've done anything else to like buff them in any considerable way. I think they're just worse now. So if you were someone that liked doing, you know, like stacked decks, league start opening or anything like that, uh, maybe not that good anymore, unfortunately. Probably the worst change out of this entire patch notes, if I had to be honest with you, is that scrolls of wisdom can now be used on items that are corrupted. And as a result of this, most items that previously dropped identified now drop unidentified. So now you're gonna get a whole bunch of just garbage 
corrupted unidentified items that you need to identify now. I'm not super happy about this. I was already kind of upset when I saw corrupted items and now I guess they're just going away and you have to identify them now before you do nothing with them essentially. So it is what it is, but not super happy about that if I'm gonna be honest with you. Resistances on flasks got two massive nerfs here. So this is mostly targeted at Pathfinder as well as Mageblood. These are not going to kill either of those things, but they are definitely massive nerfs. So Ruby, Sapphire, and Topaz flasks no longer grant less damage taken. They now grant maximum resistances, which means that those resistances can be penetrated. And they also have less raw resistances on them, meaning you're not going to be able to just have infinite resistances essentially. On top of that, there are now only three tiers of additional elemental resist on effect suffixes for flasks, and the maximum tier is now 18 to 20 instead of 37 to 40. So those have been nerfed in half. So no longer can you just get like 100 all resist or something like that with mage blood. Not going to be the case anymore. It's going to be a lot less. They've also removed the jewel suffix that grants reduced mana cost, as well as gotten rid of the flask mod. So essentially all of those builds that were kind of like skirting around getting their mana cost down to essentially zero, those just aren't going to be possible anymore. So you're actually going to have to spend mana to be able to cast your abilities. Something that I'm a little bit frustrated with is that they removed a bunch of the good and gave them essentially just kind of garbage mods on them. One in particular that I was the most upset about is that the Blood Magic Firestorm build that I played a league or two ago, which I was just kind of waiting for, you know, tattoos to come back to be able to play, it used this 4% increased life reservation efficiency of skills. This is a very rare modifier, and it's been replaced with 5% chance to bleed on hit with attacks. I, I mean, I, I guess it's fine, but like, I feel like there were only a handful of builds that even used this modifier. I don't know why it needed to be removed. It added some cool stuff into the game, but now how are you even going to play a blood magic build? Like they just don't seem very good at all, unfortunately. And then beyond that, we kept projectile speed mods. Uh, we kept like flask uh, effect, mark effect, we, we or flask effect duration, mark effect. We kept all of these things. These are all still in the game, but you get rid of my like, Life reservation efficiency of skills. Like, come on, GG, why, why you gotta do this to me? We don't know if there's any of the big tattoos that are coming back. Like, we don't know if there's any of the giant ones, like uh, the ones that allow you to have the keystone, the ones that allow you to have like plus one projectiles. There's nothing that's said about that here, as far as I can tell. But uh, yeah, just not mentioned. So we'll have to see what happens with those. One kind of sneaky change in here that I don't think a lot of people are going to realize is as big as it is is that they have rebalanced the way that item bonus mechanics work again. This was one thing that a lot of people are like, wow, the game actually just broke and doesn't work anymore. This happened a couple leagues ago and people got pretty upset with it. And there's another one in here that's in here. It shows us what's happening, but we don't exactly know how much it's been like nerfed by. So it says rare monster item bonus mechanics are now rarer. So this is the ones that uh, like make it so that it converts all of the items from the enemy into such and such like currency or scarabs or things like that. You know, there's like big giant explosions of currency that you would see on Reddit. Those have just been made vaguely rarer. And they've also gotten rid of the one that converts it to gems, which is a good thing. They've gotten rid of the one that converts it to scarabs, which is a bad thing. The white socket one, which is kind of annoying because it was pretty cool to get some white socket stuff. Um, item drops are duplicated is gone. Slain rare monsters give increased experience. And the one that I'm probably the most upset about is that slain rare monsters give increased gem experience. It was really nice, especially early on in the league when you would get one of these and essentially just catch all your gems up to your level a little bit, especially while you're doing maps. I'm pretty sad to see this go. It was really nice when it happened and it allowed you much more quickly to get to those level 20 gems, which are so powerful, especially for spells. Kind of a little frustrating, but it is what it is. When it comes to the bug fixes, Arc of Surging has been nerfed. It no longer does that weird thing where it can like all split to one target. So that build doesn't work anymore. And that is gonna be it for the video. So uh, all of the builds that I was gonna play got nerfed. I gotta go back to the drawing board to figure out what I'm gonna do for League Star Guides, if I'm even gonna be able to put out any League Star Guides at this point. And uh, yeah, bunch of crazy changes to be honest with you. And there's so much more to talk about, about just like the League itself and everything. but. 
Hopefully this helped give you the information that I think that you kind of need when it comes to the patch notes. And I uh, remember boys, if you enjoy this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in Ray class. Then I'll see you guys in the next video.